This video will discuss solving quadratic equations where our unknown is squared. And we'll start with simple and then work our way towards the more complex and end up with the quadratic formula explaining that and, and using that. So if we have x squared minus 16 equals 0, our goal here first is to isolate the variable so we add 16 to both sides. The minus 16 and the plus 16 on the left add to a 0, so we just have x squared, and we have a plus 16 on the right. Now I'm ready to take the square root of both sides. I cannot just take square root of x squared and say x equals 16. I must, take, I must perform the same operation to both sides of the equation. So I take the square root of both sides. We get x squared equals square root of 16, and I insert plus or minus in front of the uh, square root symbol. The square root function only returns a positive number, so you do need to include uh, the other case. Uh, put plus or minus in front of the square root symbol and evaluate the square root of 16 as a 4, and you can verify that's the, uh, the correct solution. So let's go on to another example, and I'm going to cut you off just a little bit here. <clears throat> so x squared minus 3x minus 10 equals 0. Uh, another technique for solving quadratic equations is to factor them, factor the equation. And you do need to have a 0 on the right side of the equality symbol. So in the general form, let's say we have x plus y. x and y represent some numbers multiplied by the quantity x plus w. Again, x and w are some numbers. Um, what we need, if you would do the distribution and FOIL method, first outside, inside, last terms multiply together, if you do the multiplication here, you would have x squared, that's good, and then you would have y times x plus w times x, and you'd add those terms, and the w and the y have to combine add together to produce minus 3. We need a minus 3x for this middle term. And then continuing, there will be a y times a w term. And the y times a w have to generate minus 10. So turn on your imagination. Can you think of two numbers that add and give minus 3, multiply and give minus 10? Well, we need opposite signs on them. Uh, so I won't bother too much here. But you know, minus 10 and 1 would be a possibility for the minus 10, and minus 5 and plus 2 would give us minus 10, but this is the choice that produces the minus 3. So we can factor y is 2 and uh, the w has a value of minus 5, so I put those in, x plus 2, x plus a minus 5, that would shortly become x minus 5, but we don't need to do that. Now we have a quantity, x plus 2, multiplying on another quantity, x minus 5. That's supposed to come up to 0 for certain values of x. So what will make that, uh, that work? Well, if we would have, I'm just going to write something off to the side here. If I have a times b equals 0, how could this be true? Well, either a is 0 times some number for b, or b is 0 times some number for a. When we multiply by a 0, we come up with a 0. So our technique is here to create a 0 for the first parentheses, and then create a 0 for the second one. That's obvious that x minus 2, a value of minus 2, would give us 0 for the first parentheses. So that's one solution. And then x of plus 5 will make this second parentheses have a value of 0. So that's our second solution. So we factored. We found our supposed answer, our suggested answer. Now we check. So I go back to the original quadratic. So I put in minus 2. It is important to put the parentheses around the minus 2. If you don't do that, um, mathematicians would claim that you're doing minus the quantity of 2 squared, and you'd end up with minus 4. That would be incorrect. This x squared, we need to multiply x by itself. So minus 2 times minus 2, that generates a 4. And then the minus 2 times the minus 3, that's a plus 6. The minus 10 constant. If you combine the, the numbers here, 4 plus 6 is a plus 10, minus 10, we get a 0. What about the 5? Well, again, putting in the 5 in replace of x, we get 5 squared minus 3 times 5 minus 10. 25 for the 5 squared, 
uh, minus 3 times plus 5 gives us minus 15, minus 10, and you can see that nets out to 0. So factoring will give us a, a solution for uh, the quadratic uh, equation. Now I'm going to go to another one here. Here we have, it's not quite on the screen, sorry about that, x squared minus 7x plus 3 equals 0. Um, you could spend some time here trying to think of two numbers that multiply and give plus 3 and add and give minus 7, but you will not find them. Um, this one does not factor with the rational factors. So let's use complete the square, the method called complete the square. So to do this, I'm going to rearrange so that the x terms stay on the left side. I move the number to the right. So I have to subtract 3 on both sides. Generates a minus 3 on the right. Now this coefficient in front of x to the first power, the minus 7. Here's the key step. We're going to divide this by 2. We're going to square. We're going to add that quantity to both sides. So minus 7 divided by 2 in the parentheses and squared. That's added on the left. And it's also added on the right. This is the key step in the completing the squared technique. The next key step is to realize on the left side you can rewrite this as the quantity x minus 7 halves squared. Um, you might want to pause the video and write this out. Uh, do x minus 7 halves times the quantity x minus 7 halves and you'll discover that it does match this left side. On the right side we've got, I'm going and squaring the minus 7 halves, that's a plus 49 over 4. To combine these two terms on the right side, I need a denominator of 4. And to generate that from the minus 3, I need to change that to minus 12 divided by 4. Minus 12 divided by 4 is minus 3. So not doing any tricks here. And now we have fractions that can be combined. They have the same denominator. So we do that. We get 37 over 4. Now we're ready to take the square root of both sides. You should not take the square root of both sides until you come up with a single number on the right side. So the square root of both sides we're going to get x minus 7 halves. Over on the right again plus or minus square root of 37 divided by 2. I'm applying the square root to both the numerator and the denominator. That is correct. The square root applies to both the numerator and the denominator. And I've gone ahead instead of writing square root of 4 here I've evaluated that and square root of 4 is replaced with 2. Now solving for x, we need to add 7 halves to both sides. So the 7 halves and then plus or minus that square root of 37 over 2. These are ready to combine into a uh, single numerator denominator form. And we get x is 7 plus or minus square root of 37 divided by 2. Those are the two solutions. I'm not going to take the time here to check this. Um, I did on my own on a separate sheet of paper. To, you should perhaps also, um, it's a little tedious, but just take this uh, um, one at a time. Oh, I need to slide up a little bit here for you. My apologies. So x is 7 plus square root of 37 over 2 for one answer. And then x is 7 minus square root of 37 over 2 for the second answer. And one at a time you take those and put them back into the original equation, x squared minus 7x plus 3, and you'll come up with 0. Um, so check those solutions. There are two solutions, one with the plus in front of the square root, another with a minus in front of the square root. But that's a little tedious. Is there some way that we can have the power of this completing the square um, without all the work? And the answer is yes. So I'm going to complete the square in general for just ax squared plus bx plus c, ax squared plus bx plus c, and in the technique here, first step would be to subtract c from both sides. c is a number. a, b, and c are numbers. And now I'm simplifying a little bit. I'm going to divide through by a, so x squared plus b over a times x minus c over a. To complete the square, what do we do? the coefficient in front of x to the first power, we divide that by 2, we square, and we add to both sides. So it generates uh, what's starting to look a little messy, but it'll pay off. Uh, so b divided by 2a, that quantity squared, gets added to both sides. 
on the left, we can rewrite this as x plus b over 2a. That whole quantity is now squared. So you have to, it's not magic or sleight of hand, but you have to be careful. And again, you might want to verify, take x plus b over 2a times x plus b over 2a, and go ahead and perform that square. You'll get back to this left side. <clears throat> over on the right side, minus c over a, and squaring this, b squared over 4a squared. The square applies to every factor inside this, uh, the parentheses. Uh, don't just write b squared over 2a. It's b squared divided by 4a squared. Go a little further here, same uh, information on the left side. I want to add these two terms together. <clears throat> I need common denominator to do that, so I'm going to multiply this minus c over a term by 4a, by 4a, both on the numerator and the denominator. So we have minus, instead of just c, we have minus 4ac. Instead of a in the denominator, we've got 4a times a, that's 4a squared. And now these match and they can be added. So I take the square root of both sides and we'll, I'll catch up with adding them, combining them uh, later. Um, in fact, we'll ignore that comment. Um, we're going to take the square root of both sides. So we have x plus b over 2a on the left. Over here we have square root, and again plus or minus, there are two possibilities. When I take the square root here, it's a plus and a minus. And b squared over 4a squared, I'm writing this term first. And then minus 4ac over 4a squared. So now let's process a little bit. Subtract b over 2a on both sides. And inside the radical, hope you can follow along here, but uh, maybe I'll go ahead and write this out uh, so you can see it a little better. Inside the radical, this is b squared over 4a squared minus 4ac. And applying the radical to the numerator and the denominator, uh, the b squared minus 4ac is unaffected. It just stays there. But the square root of this denominator, 4a squared, the square root of 4 is 2, the square root of a squared is a. And now these two terms can be combined. They have the same denominator. And this is the result that we want. Uh, the quadratic formula quadratic formula, very useful for solving quadratic equations. And if you remember, we started with ax squared plus bx plus c. a, b, and c are numbers. And I'm not going to get into imaginary numbers, just real numbers. Um, so we get minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac, all that divided by 2a. The b squared minus 4ac is an indicator of what solution you're going to come up with. I'm not going to go into all that, but uh, just beware. If it does come out negative, you can't take the square root of a negative number. So that's an imaginary uh, solution. Talk to your instructor about those if you're interested. But now we have this general way of solving quadratic uh, equations. We have our quadratic formula. So let's see if it actually works. I'm going to go back to our uh, earlier examples and see if applying the quadratic formula in each case gives us the same result we had earlier. So the first example we had was x squared minus 16 equals 0. In this, the coefficient of the x squared term is a 1, so a is a 1. There is no x to the first power term, so that coefficient is 0. And then our constant is minus 16. So I'm going to work these out by, by hand. I hope my handwriting is legible for you. But x would be minus b. Well, I look up here, and that's a 0. Plus or minus square root of 0 squared minus 4 times a times c. And that's all divided by 2 times a. So oh, that's zero, that's, that's nothing. In here, notice we have a minus and a minus multiplying together, so they are going to um, make a positive, and we get square root of, it's going to be plus or minus, 
square root of 64 divided by 2. The square root of 64 is 8. So I get plus or minus 8 over 2. I get plus or minus 4. And if you recall, that is the answer we came up with before. Um, okay, next one. And again, pause the video and, and check uh, notes that you might have made if you have questions. x squared minus 3x minus 10. We solved this one by factoring. And we came up with minus 2 and plus 5, if you remember. Let's see what happens with quadratic formula. So x equals a is 1, b is minus 3, the coefficient of x to the first power, and c is minus 10. So minus b is going to be minus a minus 3, plus or minus square root. I have to do b squared, so minus 3 quantity squared. And then I always get a minus sign here, and then always a 4, and then the value of a and the value of c. It's very important you pay attention to the signs and that you capture the sign for the letter. So minus 3 is the b value, minus 10 is the constant. b is not plus 3. b includes that minus sign, and likewise the c. And all this divided by 2 times a. So the minus a minus 3, I'm going to get a plus 3. Plus or minus square root. Minus 3 times itself generates plus 9. Minus 4 times minus 10, I get a 40. And here's a 2. And now just need a little bit more space. But x is going to be 3. Plus or minus, and let's go ahead and evaluate here. 9 plus 40, that would be 49. And the square root of 49 generates a 7. So 3 plus or minus 7 divided by 2. If I take the plus sign, I'm going to get 3 plus 7 divided by 2. 3 plus 7 is 10 divided by 2. That generates a 5 for the result. If I take the minus sign, 3 minus 7, that's minus 4 up in the numerator divided by the 2, and I get minus 2. The same numbers we had for solutions uh, earlier in this video. Let's go with our last one here. x squared minus 7x plus 3 equals 0. a is 1. b is minus 7. c now is a positive. It's a 3. And again, applying quadratic formula, x equals minus the b value. b is minus 7 plus or minus square root b squared, that's minus 7 squared, minus 4 times a times c, all this divided by 2 times the 1. <coughs> so we're working on our uh, evaluating again. So minus a minus 7, that generates is plus 7, plus or minus we get 49 for the minus 7 squared. Minus 4 times plus 3, that's a minus 12. And then we get a 2 here. So x is 7 plus or minus square root of 37, the 49 minus the 12, divided by 2. And that's where I stop, because uh, I'm just going to leave it in that radical form. And that is the same result we had earlier. So. The most powerful technique in general is going to be the quadratic formula. Just be careful when you identify the numbers for b and c. If there's a negative sign there, that goes into the b value. And you'll have a minus, a minus here, and that'll end up being positive first term. Um, you know, check out a math book with some examples worked out, or ask your instructor. But quadratic equations are solvable. And I'm not getting into the imaginaries where b squared minus 4ac is a negative. Um, but ask your instructor if you have questions on that. But most of the time you will not encounter that situation. So x equals minus b plus or minus square root of the quantity b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. That is our quadratic formula. And you know perhaps you're uh, interested in solving this because you're coming up on a physics course or an astronomy course. If you would like some more videos, um, 
physics.gpclements.com for physics uh, tutorials, astronomy.gpclements.com for astronomy tutorials. My list of YouTube videos are uh, on pages there. Uh, there's nothing for sale at these sites. You don't have to register or log in. Uh, these sites just provide an easy way to find a video that might be helpful to you. So I hope they are helpful and keep practicing. Work lots of problems.